The pseudo-random bit sequence generator can be used to generate a binary sequence of pseudo-random bits. The bit sequence can be connected to a binary sequence visualizer so that the output bit sequence can be seen. Double-clicking the block shows the main properties. Clicking beside bitrate, we can change the bitrate of the block to base it on other parameters or to make it get its value from a function. Pressing evaluate, we can see what the current value of bitrate is. If we want to change the value of the bitrate defined for our entire project, we can double click on our workspace and the global parameters window will pop up. In the global parameters window, the bitrate for the project as well as other global parameters may be changed. Now returning to the bit sequence generator and pressing evaluate script, we can see that the bitrate has been updated. With the operation mode on probability, the bit sequence generator will generate a random output and the probability of generating a 1 will be based on the mark probability. The length of the sequence generator will be equal to that of the global parameter sequence length. Before we test out the bit sequence generator, I'm going to change the number of leading and trailing zeros so we can easily observe the output. As you can see, the output of the generator reflected a 0.5 probability of generating 1 at the output. Now I would like to try changing the mark probability to something lower. With a lower mark probability, we should be seeing less ones in our bit sequence. After calculating the project a couple of times and looking at the visualizer, we can see the probability of generating a 1 is now much lower. Going back to the bit sequence generator and going into the random numbers tab, we can choose to either generate a random seed each time or define our seed. A seed is a number used to initialize the pseudo random generator. So if we uncheck the generate random seed box and instead choose our own random seed, this means every time we run the random generator, we should receive the same set of random numbers because the seed used to generate them is all the same. Running the program twice, the result is as expected. The set of random bits is the same because we use the same seed both times. Going back to select the generate random seed box again, we should expect that this time the results will be different because we are using a different seed now. Upon calculating the project, we can see that this time the result is different because the seeds we are using has changed. Going back into the bit sequence generator and changing the operation mode to order will cause the pseudo random generator to generate a random bit sequence with a period of 2 to the power of the order and all of that minus 1. Clicking on order, the value can be changed to make it dependent on other layout parameters. Pressing evaluate, we can see what its current value is. We can now calculate the project and check the binary sequence visualizer to see the output. Changing the output range to a large number, we can see that the sequence ends at 1024 bits. Given an order of 10, this means that the period of the sequence would be equal to 1023 bits. Going back into the sequence generator and changing the operation mode to alternate will cause the output sequence to alternate between ones and zeros. Changing the operation mode to ones will cause it to output all ones. Changing the operation mode to zero will cause it to output all zeros.